Hi, I'm Sam Hawley, coming to you from Gadigal Land. This is ABC News Daily. The war in Ukraine is seen as Vladimir Putin's war. So should we really punish Russians by stopping their athletes from competing internationally? Australia's the latest nation that wants them banned from next year's Olympics in Paris. Today, host of the Ticket podcast, Tracy Holmes, on the dilemma when sport and politics collide. Ladies and gentlemen, sports community, each of us knows what the Olympic principles are. Terror and Olympics. Tracy, this is a pretty vexed issue whether Russian athletes should be allowed to compete at the Olympics. The Ukrainian president, Vladimir Zelensky, he's adamant that that should just not happen. Yeah, the Ukrainian president, Vladimir Zelensky, made uh, this plea at the opening address of a summit with the sports ministers of 35 different countries. He said that the Olympic movement and what he called terrorist states should not cross paths. We must protect life. We must protect our values. We must stop aggression and fight against those who choose the road of terrorism. And um, Zelensky's also threatened a boycott if the IOC persists in going down this path. Mm, And now he has some really big supporters, doesn't he? Yeah, a statement came out about a week after, uh, on the 20th of February, a statement by the representatives of those 35 different countries, including Australia, but also the United States, Canada, the UK, Japan, New Zealand, among others. And they signed this joint statement uh, pushing back against the idea that the IOC is looking for a way to allow athletes from uh, Russia and Belarus to compete at the Paris Olympics in 2024. So the wording of the letter says things like, there is no practical reason reason not to ban them. And also that in Russia and Belarus, and and this was one of their main points, sports and politics are so closely intertwined that that needed to be taken into consideration. They said that Russia and Belarus have it in their own hands to allow athletes to return to the Olympics by ending the war. And if athletes from the two countries want to participate, the IOC should clarify how they would participate without identifying with their respective countries since they are directly funded and supported by those states. Mm. Tracy, let's talk about the IOC response in a moment. But is there any precedent for this, for a country being banned from the Olympics because of a war? The one that got most prominence was uh, in 1992 at the Barcelona Games and Yugoslavian athletes uh, were allowed to compete as independent athletes uh, because their nation was under United Nations sanctions at the time because of uh, the ongoing civil war there. But let's not forget that all of this came off the back of the Cold War boycott era of the 1980s. And we were involved in that as well. So um, the Australian Olympic Committee, it was called the Australian Olympic Federation back then, they voted controversially six to five to defy the government's call to boycott the Moscow Olympics because Russia had invaded Afghanistan. And uh, this boycott was led by the US. Jimmy Carter was president at the time and it got um, more than 60 nations uh, to agree to a boycott. The thinking being uh, that a boycott of the Olympic Games in Moscow um, would stop the war happening in Afghanistan. Well, as we know, that war raged on for 10 years. State says Soviet troops have ignored President Carter's deadline for a withdrawal from Afghanistan, so American athletes will not be going to Moscow, according to the White House, that is, and the Americans now are actively trying to persuade as many other nations as possible to boycott the Soviet Olympics. Uh, So that was a really vicious time that split this country and Mm. others. Um, Olympic officials, teenage athletes were being given death threats. They were described in headlines and news bulletins as traitors. Uh, It ended lifelong friendships forever. And um, the Prime Minister at the time, Malcolm Fraser, did say much later uh, that it was a mistake and it, it divided sports. It put unfair pressure on young athletes 
who really had nothing to do with the war. So let's talk about what the IOC is doing, because when the war first broke out, it came out really strongly against Russia and against Belarus that was helping Russia. Yeah, the IOC was one of the first bodies in the world to sanction Russia and Belarus, saying no state officials or national representation would be allowed at at their events. It wrote to all of its constituents around the world, sports governing bodies, National Olympic committees, etc., imploring them to ban athletes from those two countries and also to remove events that they had planned to host in those countries in the future. Condemnation of Russian President Vladimir Putin as world sport takes a stand from the football pitch to the Paralympics and motor racing. Bans implemented and events cancelled. Now, some sports followed that advice, others didn't. As we know, athletes from Russia and Belarus have been competing here in Australia. They Mm. were at the uh, Australian Tennis Open just last month as neutral athletes. And then in December, the IOC softened uh, that advice uh, that all athletes from Russia and Belarus be banned following written queries from two UN special rapporteurs who reminded the IOC of a UN declaration that international sport not be used to discriminate against people from anywhere. And Mm. so hence the IOC's plan to pave a way for these Russian and Belarusian athletes to compete uh, at the 2024 Paris Olympic Games under a neutral flag. The the most important thing is for them to be able to compete. The athletes themselves haven't started the war, aren't competing, aren't in the war. Still a lot of restrictions, no flags, no protocols. No national anthems, none of that. Uh, No officials from Russia will be invited or from Belarus. So the IOC softened its approach, but that was before all of these countries, including Australia, got together to ask for a full ban. So now... What's the IOC saying? Well, they haven't responded directly as yet, um, but the International Olympic Committee President Thomas Bach uh, has said previously that accusations um, that allowing Russian and Belarusian athletes back into the Games would promote uh, the the war are defamatory. Uh, He called on Ukraine to quit its threat of a boycott of Paris 2024, effectively to stop politicising the Olympic Games. Um, So they've said that they've not even completed their work yet, which will ultimately define the parameters around this term of neutrality. Mm. And they say they are open to constructive questions. But they've reminded everyone that the IOC runs the Olympic Games and warned, uh, as I say, against the politicisation of that. And, you know, what was effectively built as an arena for the world to be able to come together once every four years, put those differences aside uh, and to compete in a friendly environment. And the president of the IOC said a boycott uh, would go against Olympic principles and would only harm the athletes of Ukraine since, quote, previous boycotts did not achieve their political ends. Okay, so the IOC doesn't want the Olympics politicised and it's looking, by the sound of it, at the parameters it might be able to set. But there are, Tracy, other sports, aren't there, that have moved really quickly on this and they have implemented bans on Russian athletes. Yeah, they moved on this um, after the war began. So some sports organisations implemented those bans, as the IOC had recommended, uh, including Wimbledon. Uh, which banned tennis players from Russia and Belarus last year. And for that, they were fined about $1.5 million by the ATP Tour that runs the men's competition. Um, The UCI, the governing body for cycling, has also banned Russian and Belarusian cyclists from participating on teams that represent their countries. Uh, But they have allowed them to compete as neutrals as part of other professional teams. Uh, And there's many others who have not supported punishing individual athletes. So other than Wimbledon, the other three tennis grand slams do allow participation uh, by Russia and uh, Belarus athletes as neutrals. Mm. And um, the US Open said last year it would allow them to enter its tournament to not hold, again, the individual athletes accountable for the actions and decisions of their governments. The IOC is going to have to make a decision, isn't it? If it does go ahead with this idea that Russian athletes compete potentially under a neutral flag, what position do you think, Tracy, that leaves the 35 countries, including Australia, that have said, no, that should not happen? 
What do they do next? Well, this is the really interesting point and you have to wonder where they do go next and whether that leads to another call of boycotting the Paris 24 Olympic Games. Now, uh, as we mentioned, the IOC has pointed out that nations don't invite other nations to the Olympics. The IOC invites national Olympic committees to the Olympics. So it's out of the hands of the politicians in that regard. And one very senior IOC member, who happens to be an Australian IOC member, John Coates, said recently that if there is another tit-for-tat boycott era, it will blow up the Olympic movement forever. It could blow the Olympic movement apart forever. I don't know that uh, we could withstand a, uh, a boycott. At the end of the day, If the Games is meant to be a unifying force, if it's to bring countries and athletes together, then they should be able to compete. Let's also think about the next three Olympic Games. There's Paris in 24, there's LA in 28, and then there's Brisbane in 2032. And so if Western nations are going to be calling for a boycott, which runs completely counter to the Olympic Charter, Uh, one wonders what will happen and whether there will be these tit-for-tat boycotts as we saw in the 80s. Tracy Holmes is the host of The Ticket podcast. The Ukrainian president, Vladimir Zelensky, says 228 Ukrainian athletes and coaches have died since the war began. This episode was produced by Sydney Peed and Chris Dengate, who also did the mix. Our supervising producer is Stephen Smiley. I'm Sam Hawley. To get in touch with the team, please email us on ABC News Daily at abc.net.au. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to listen to more free podcasts or download the ABC Listen app and stream ad-free.